All right, who's going to have a slice of pie? Oh, slice of pie. I am so fat. Oh, slice of pie. No, 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 I pass. Jenna, you want to slice of pie? No, 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 thank you. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. This is the first brain picnic I've ever been to. We have so much dessert left, I can't believe it. Probably because everybody left early. And I was just getting the hang of throwing those horseshoes. What a bitch. Probably when John slammed the door. Oh, yeah, he slammed it for the first time. I was at the second time. Right. What, uh, why was he so upset? I'm not sure, but I think it's because of Kelsey. Oh, what, the pie thing? I thought they solved the pie thing and the prize in there was. Well, they did. This was, uh, something different. <laughs> Wait, you know something we don't know? Hmm? Hello, everybody. I'm here. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. You are a farm girl. Farm girl, that's what you are, right? <laughs> I dress for every occasion. Uh -huh. Well, this occasion happens to be a picnic. See, that is where you're wrong, Matthew. This occasion is not just a picnic. It is a very, very important day. One that we will all remember. So, stand back, everyone. Well, I had fun today. I even tried some of Ivis Wheeler's homemade potato salad and lived to tell the tale. Right. I guess Cass is done with his business meeting now. Why don't I go give him a buzz? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I've officially stopped talking to myself now, so you two can jump in whenever you like. Frank is right. We should talk about this. I don't think I have much to say. John, I know what I said hurt you. Please, I, I can't stand the silent treatment. Kelsey, Charlene is a part of my life. She always will be. If you can't accept that, I suggest we just call it quits. <laughs> Midline Air. Uh, yeah, this is Detective Ryan Harrison, Bay City Police Department. I'm uh, investigating a case, and I'm looking for a suspect. This morning, do you have a uh, Flight 49 leaving today? You do? Great. Uh, this is Mr. Andrews. Yeah, um, the suspect's name is Ian Rain, but he's probably operating underneath an alias. He's about 6'2", 180, 190 pounds. He's got brown hair, blue eyes, uh, an Australian accent. Yeah, I need to know if anyone fitting that description picked up tickets for the flight today. Great. You can get back in touch with me. My number is 555-2931. Thank you very much. Detective Miller! I thought you were off the Harrison kidnapping case. Yeah, well, it never hurts to do a little extra background work now, does it? <laughs> yeah, well, the only thing Chief wants you doing is a little backside work. Mm -hmm. Office detail. Is that how it looks like from way up there? Let me put it to you another way. The closest you're going to get to any action on this case is opening and closing your desk drawers. Yeah, well, they're my desk drawers. I do what I want behind them. Uh, chief won't be pleased to hear that. <laughs> Since when did the chief appoint you my superior, detective? You went one better. I'm the new primary on the Harrison case. So when this little red thing of a bob goes on, you start talking. Into this thing of a jig here with the lens? Mm -hmm. Be quiet. We don't have time for silly. I know how to behave at a press conference. Good. The more the public knows about Ian Rain, the sooner he can be caught. And this nightmare will be over. Amen. Thank you for clearing air time for us, Victoria and I both. Thank you, as a matter of fact. I'm worried about her. I've never seen her this pale. Don't worry about her. She knows to light up for the press. Well, why don't you let her sit this one out? She doesn't need to be barraged by a bunch of personal questions right She's now. She's prepared. She's under a lot of stress. There's a job to be done. Victoria knows that. She'll do whatever I ask. Then stop asking. I beg your pardon? Grant, you want so much of her. You goad her, you challenge her, and when she tries to give you everything you want, you ask for more. Cut the apron strings, Donna. Victoria and I are just fine. Take a good look at your wife. She's about to snap. And when she does, you're going to lose her for good. Donna, all I've done is ask my wife to appear at a news conference with me. I hardly think that's cause for a scene. She's at the breaking point. Can't you see that? Well, of course she's concerned. The man who kidnapped her is missing. It's not Ian. It's you. And by the way, I'm on your side. But look at what you're doing to her, Grant. 24-hour guards? 
orders all the time, we're constantly checking up. These are safety procedures just as before the wedding. And they're driving her crazy. She can't live this way. Donna, there's a man out there who took my wife. I'm doing everything in my power to see that it never happens again. I want her to be as safe as you do. But there's a limit. She'll have all the space and freedom she needs once she moves to Washington. She needs the freedom now. I'm afraid that's not possible. Grant, you're backing her into a corner. And she's going to look for the way out. And if she does that, will it be with your blessing? I have always been supportive of your marriage to Victoria. Really? Yes. But you can't force it. You can't make it work by trying to break her spirit, no matter who you're afraid of out there trying to get her. You've made your point, Donna. And she made her decision. She chose you. So just ease up on her for everybody's sake. When Ian Rain is behind bars, I'll get rid of the guards. Then I'll move my family to Washington where they'll be safe. Until that happens, Donna, I won't let my wife out of my sight. So, what can you tell me about Victoria Harrison and Ian Rain? Absolutely nothing. I'm conducting a full-scale investigation here, Harrison. I'm going to need your cooperation. So why don't you ask the cops who are working on the case? But you know how Victoria Harrison ticks. Intimate. Why don't you just get out of my face? You see, that's what got you removed from the case in the first place. You're too emotionally involved. It can lead to costly mistakes. You know, while you're deadly. sitting here yammering away in my office, Ian Rain is looking for a nice, safe, permanent hiding place. Don't worry, my men are on it. As for you, Harrison, no more unauthorized phone calls. Mm -hmm. Fine. It's all yours. Thanks. Oh, uh, if you think of anything else I should know, I'm in the office next door. <laughs> hey, just like old times, huh? Almost as close as the bunks in the academy dorm. Yeah. So, Gordon, when uh, Grant got in touch with the chief, did he do it personally or did he work through uh, departmental channels? The senator? He's got the chief's private number, got right through. <sighs> Must care an awful lot about me. Getting you reassigned probably saved your neck. You've got a good family, Ryan. They look after you. I wish I was that lucky. Me, this is my family right here. Yeah. Harrison family, they're one of a kind, you know? Look, if you're getting dinner, well, I'll split a pizza. No, I think you're on your own. You said that I had made this house into a shrine to St. Charlene. I am so sorry that you heard me say that. I mean, if I could take the words back, I would in a heartbeat. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm glad I know how you feel. Now we can talk about it. I swear to you, John, I would never do anything to put down Charlene's memory or, or the love that you had for each other. Then why did you? What's, what's going on? I thought we were doing okay. Well, I thought so, too. Until I came here today. John, Charlene is all over this house. She's in every corner of every room. I mean, all of her things. <laughs> Even the way she arranged her dishes. Uh, you're right. I, I haven't changed much since she died. John, you haven't moved one piece of furniture. Well, tell me, are there civil penalties involved with that? John, the reality is she's gone. Well, the reality is, I have a son who may never remember what his mother looked like. Kelsey, this is Charlene's house. Everything in it belonged to her. And if I can keep it just like it was, and keep her memory alive for Gregory, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. You're right, of course. Of course, you're right. If that's what you consider creating a shrine, then I have no argument with you. Maybe we could try downgrading it to just a modest monument. Look, I, I, I know I have a lot to sort out. I'm Charlene is concerned, especially about us. But I'm trying. I got to tell you, John. Sometimes it seems like there is so much of Charlene that there isn't room for anyone else. Meaning you. It's kind of crowded in here. Kelsey, no, no, there's plenty of room for you. In, in case I haven't bothered to tell you lately, I, I'm extremely grateful that you're in my life. I'm not talking about making room in your life, John. 
talking about making room in your heart 